Authenticity is the daily practice of letting go of who we think we're supposed to be and embracing who we are. I define connection as the energy that exists between people when they feel seen, heard, and valued, when they can give and receive without judgment, and when they derive sustenance and strength from the relationship. When we deny our stories, they define us. When we own our stories, we get to write the ending. Daring greatly means the courage to be vulnerable. It means to show up and be seen. To ask for what you need. To talk about how you're feeling. To have the hard conversations. Joy is not a constant. It comes to us in moments, often ordinary moments. Sometimes we miss out on the bursts of joy because we're too busy chasing down the extraordinary moments. Other times we're so afraid of the dark we don't dare let ourselves enjoy the light. A joyful life is not a floodlight of joy. That would eventually become unbearable. I believe a joyful life is made up of joyful moments gracefully strung together by trust, gratitude and inspiration. We can have courage or we can have comfort, but we cannot have both. Guilt, I'm sorry. I made a mistake. Shame, I'm sorry. I am a mistake. Only when we are brave enough to explore the darkness will we discover the infinite power of our light. Don't try to win over the haters, you are not a jackass whisperer. We don't have to be perfect, just engaged and committed to aligning values with actions. Vulnerability is the birthplace of innovation, creativity, and change. Imperfections are not inadequacies, they are reminders that we're all in this together. Owning our story can be hard but not nearly as difficult as spending our lives running from it. Embracing our vulnerabilities is risky but not nearly as dangerous as giving up on love and belonging and joy the experiences that make us the most vulnerable. Only when we are brave enough to explore the darkness will we discover the infinite power of our light. If you put shame in a petri dish, it needs three ingredients to grow exponentially, secrecy, silence, and judgment. If you put the same amount of shame in the petri dish and douse it with empathy, it can't survive. It's not about what can I accomplish, but what do I want to accomplish? People may call what happens at midlife a crisis, but it's not. It's an unraveling, a time when you feel a desperate pull to live the life you want to live, not the one you're supposed to live. The unraveling is a time when you are challenged by the universe to let go of who you think you are supposed to be and to embrace who you are. The question isn't so much are you parenting the right way, as it is, are you the adult that you want your child to grow up to be? We're all so busy chasing the extraordinary that we forget to stop and be grateful for the ordinary. Healthy striving is self-focused, how can I improve? Perfectionism is other-focused, what will they think? Talk to yourself like you would to someone you love. Nothing has transformed my life more than realizing that it's a waste of time to evaluate my worthiness by weighing the reaction of the people in the stands. When we can let go of what other people think and own our story, we gain access to our worthiness, the feeling that we are enough just as we are and that we are worthy of love and belonging. When we spend a lifetime trying to distance ourselves from the parts of our lives that don't fit with who we think we're supposed to be, we stand outside of our story and hustle for our worthiness by constantly performing, perfecting, pleasing, and proving. Our sense of worthiness, that critically important piece that gives us access to love and belonging, lives inside of our story. Yes, I am imperfect and vulnerable and sometimes afraid, but that doesn't change the truth that I am also brave and worthy of love and belonging. Our stories are not meant for everyone. Hearing them is a privilege, 
and we should always ask ourselves this before we share, who has earned the right to hear my story? If we have one or two people in our lives who can sit with us and hold space for our shame stories, and love us for our strengths and struggles, we are incredibly lucky. If we have a friend, or small group of friends, or family who embraces our imperfections, vulnerabilities, and power, and fills us with a sense of belonging, we are incredibly lucky. If we can share our story with someone who responds with empathy and understanding, shame can't survive. Courage starts with showing up and letting ourselves be seen. Wholehearted living is about engaging in our lives from a place of worthiness. It means cultivating the courage, compassion, and connection to wake up in the morning and think, no matter what gets done and how much is left undone, I am enough. It's going to bed at night thinking, yes, I am imperfect and vulnerable and sometimes afraid, but that doesn't change the truth that I am also brave and worthy of love and belonging. We are hardwired to connect with others, it's what gives purpose and meaning to our lives, and without it there is suffering. To love someone fiercely, to believe in something with your whole heart, to celebrate a fleeting moment in time, to fully engage in a life that doesn't come with guarantees, these are risks that involve vulnerability and often pain. But, I'm learning that recognizing and leaning into the discomfort of vulnerability teaches us how to live with joy, gratitude and grace. If we own the story then we can write the ending. We live in a world where most people still subscribe to the belief that shame is a good tool for keeping people in line. Not only is this wrong, but it's dangerous. Shame is highly correlated with addiction, violence, aggression, depression, eating disorders, and bullying. Perfectionism is a self-destructive and addictive belief system that fuels this primary thought, if I look perfect, and do everything perfectly, I can avoid or minimize the painful feelings of shame, judgment, and blame. What makes you vulnerable makes you beautiful. Compassion is not a virtue it is a commitment. It's not something we have or don't have it's something we choose to practice. I believe in the healing power of laughter. I believe laughter forces us to breathe. We cannot selectively numb emotions, when we numb the painful emotions, we also numb the positive emotions. I've come to this belief that, if you show me a woman who can sit with a man in real vulnerability, in deep fear, and be with him in it, I will show you a woman who, a, has done her work and, b, does not derive her power from that man. And if you show me a man who can sit with a woman in deep struggle and vulnerability and not try to fix it, but just hear her and be with her and hold space for it, I'll show you a guy who's done his work and a man who doesn't derive his power from controlling and fixing everything. Vulnerability sounds like truth and feels like courage. Truth and courage aren't always comfortable, but they're never weakness. Belonging starts with self-acceptance. Your level of belonging, in fact, can never be greater than your level of self-acceptance, because believing that you're enough is what gives you the courage to be authentic, vulnerable, and imperfect. When we don't have that, we shapeshift and turn into chameleons, we hustle for the worthiness we already possess. Believing that you're enough is what gives you the courage to be authentic. Shame is the most powerful, master emotion. It's the fear that we're not good enough. Every time we choose courage, we make everyone around us a little better and the world a little braver. And our world could stand to be a little kinder and braver. Daring to set boundaries is about having the courage to love ourselves, even when we risk disappointing others. Every single person has a story that will break your heart. And if you're paying attention, many people have a story that will bring you to your knees. Nobody rides for free. The willingness to show up changes us, it makes us a little braver each time. 
I now see how owning our story and loving ourselves through that process is the bravest thing that we will ever do. Raising children who are hopeful and who have the courage to be vulnerable means stepping back and letting them experience disappointment, deal with conflict, learn how to assert themselves, and have the opportunity to fail. If we're always following our children into the arena, hushing the critics, and assuring their victory, they'll never learn that they have the ability to dare greatly on their own. What we know matters but who we are matters more. One of the greatest barriers to connection is the cultural importance we place on going it alone. Somehow we've come to equate success with not needing anyone. Many of us are willing to extend a helping hand, but we're very reluctant to reach out for help when we need it ourselves. It's as if we've divided the world into those who offer help and those who need help. The truth is that we are both. At the end of my life, I want to be able to say I contributed more than I criticized. Let go of who you think you're supposed to be and embrace who you are. Empathy doesn't require that we have the exact same experiences as the person sharing their story with us. Empathy is connecting with the emotion that someone is experiencing, not the event or the circumstance. You can't get to courage without walking through vulnerability. Which quote did you like the most? Share your opinion in the comments below. Subscribe and don't miss out the chance to see the next video.